Welcome to DOS Geek. This is my new pad. We still got to get everything set up. There are boxes everywhere. Everything's a mess. I apologize. That's not the point of this video, though. The point of this video is I've never been a fan of GNOME. It's okay. It reminds me of kind of like a workstation login desktop environment. That is until what has happened with Pop! OS, what they have done to tweak GNOME just enough to make it perfect. I didn't like it. Now I love it. Let's find out why. Look, we're friends, right? So in this video, I can be honest with you. I could just say how I feel without you going on this hate train if you don't like GNOME typically, or if you're a fanboy of GNOME, not getting all this hate. We're just gonna talk like friends here, and I'm gonna say GNOME vanilla by itself without extensions is like child's play. It has nothing that you would need in a modern desktop. They're trying to reinvent the wheel by thinking differently, but in this stupid Apple kind of way where they just remove a bunch of features that you actually use and are actually useful that you have to then go to an extension to go add back in. And that's been my problem with GNOME from the beginning. And the extensions are created a lot from the community and they weren't really a big part or of the infrastructure of GNOME, meaning, you know, it doesn't pop up in the intro and be like, hey, go get these extensions so you can make it a usable desktop environment. We could be friends and still say that, right? I'm just being honest here. But then you have people like Pop! OS. Pop! OS takes this GNOME desktop environment and adds in these extensions by default. So you don't have to go hunt for them. With you take what Pop! OS has done with GNOME, it creates this incredible desktop environment. With Pop! OS, they actually are, in fact, were the first ones to enable the hardware enablement for AMD Ryzen. When it was having the X570 already Rand boot issue, Pop! OS went in there, System76, able to tweak it and get it booting it was the only reason I was able to be one of the first ones in Linux to show off the X570 and all the AMD Ryzen third gen hardware out there because of the work Pop! OS did. No other distro worked with it. So this is the things that makes Pop! OS quite fascinating. And of course, System76 is the creator of this and it makes some magnificent hardware. But let me show you why this is so amazing. Okay, so this may not be your typical workstation setup, but what I have here is Audacity, which I use to edit a bunch of audio. I have the Dosgeek community webpage.com here. I have the .net here because I was trying to play between Ghost and WordPress to see which one's faster. Um, Ghost is, in case you were wondering there. It's like two videos in one now. And uh, so I have a bunch of windows here and what do I do? How do I organize them? Well, I could take one like you would in Windows or any other operating system and kind of manually move them around and try to get them configured. Or I can go up here with Pop! OS with their pop tile and just click tile windows. And now look, every single thing here is nicely tiled on my screen. And there's a bunch of shortcuts here so that you can change how everything works. So let's take a look. Do you have to go and search online to find what all the shortcuts are? No. In fact, they give you all of this information right here. So if I just click on shortcuts, boom, now it's gonna open another window, which it automatically tiled for me, by the way, and it's gonna tell me all of the options that I have. If I do the super and the slash there, I'm going to get a, another menu here, which is a quick way to open another software program that maybe I'm interested in. Perhaps I want to open Steam, so I can just type here and I can see Steam. So that's one way to get to a menu if I want to, so they have that shortcut. If I wanna change focus of windows, I just hold the super key, and I also have another monitor here, which it will switch between, but I can change focus. Kind of hard for you to see though, but wouldn't be if I do show active hint. Now it's gonna be a little easier for you to see. So now we can take a look at what they've built in. You see you have alt tab, raise first window, always show workspaces, desktop icons, so that you can put icons if you want on your desktop right here, pop battery icon fix, pop shell, Pop Shop Details, System76 Power, and Ubuntu App Indicators all in here. So a lot of great extensions in by default to help the overall usability of the system. Now let me show you some additional ways. We also have the Show Applications and Dash to Dock, which moves that down into our dock here. And you can see all the applications that I have installed. I can go to a frequent tab, I can go to all. This is pretty standard GNOME stuff here. Pop! OS, I don't think has done any enhancements outside of maybe theming and icons here. But the point is, this is just when you add all of it together, the vanilla GNOME experience and all of the enhancements that Pop! OS has done, this is now a very viable desktop environment for 
the first time, in my opinion, really perfect out of the box without having to do manual intervention near perfection, at least because nothing's perfect. Let's talk about Pop Shop. This is the last thing I'm going to highlight here. I love Pop Shop. It is the most functional store I have used out there, period. The only thing I would love for them to borrow from the elementary world is an easy way when you go into a lot of these open source apps for you to donate because I think it's so important that these developers get kicked back for the work that they're doing here. But outside of that, it is very functional, very fast, easy to use. It integrates with flat packs right out of the box. So when we go into the settings here, you can see you have your flat back sources and it has flat hub there by default. But if you need things like Steam, you could just click here, type in Steam, it's there. You need Lutris because this allows you to run a lot of different games and interfaces through Wine and all the backend stuff if you want to Windows-based games that aren't initially made to run on Linux, then you have all of that right here. You have two versions of Pop! OS when you go to download an NVIDIA version and an AMD Intel version. The difference, you have an NVIDIA GPU, you download that version, you have AMD Intel, that's all baked into the kernel. You can download that version without having NVIDIA proprietary drivers there with it. And it just makes it so easy because you have the NVIDIA drivers enabled during installation there. This also works fantastically with hybrid graphics. So I am using an eGPU. It has hybrid graphics. We have the Intel in the Nook, and it also has the AMD GPU in the Nook as well. And I have the NVIDIA eGPU in the Razer Core X. But if I want to launch an app, you can see I have options like to launch using dedicated graphics cards and things like that. So it's just, it's really, really well laid out when you take all of the work that GNOME has done, and then you add the refinement that Pop! OS has put on top of it. Again, it just makes for a fantastic experience. Look, defaults matter. In fact, we're going to talk about defaults in the upcoming Destination Linux podcast. It's coming out this week, and we have Game Fest coming up right after that this Sunday. So you want to check that out. But defaults matter, and the default wallpapers that are available in Pop! OS are fun. They are exciting. You want to get in here and play. You don't want to go online and start immediately searching for other wallpapers, which is what I do in 100% of every other distro out beside Pop! OS. The art that they have in here, I think is just amazing. Whether you're a fan of the awesome looking robot, which I believe has a name, but it's escaping me right now. You've got all of these different pop themes. You've got some nice cartoon themes, but if you're somebody who's more serious and you want that space theme, you've got that as well. And look, it's just, it's beautiful, right? I've got a 2K screen, two 2K screens, and I want a nice looking wallpaper and they have such great defaults out here and it just shows the attention to detail that's put into Pop! OS that makes all of the difference. Is there anything extraordinary that they're throwing in here? Maybe not, it depends on your opinion. I think the tiling's quite extraordinary on top of you know a base Ubuntu GNOME, but it's all of the tweaks and enhancements that make it look like a professional desktop, that makes it get out of your way. It gives you multiple ways to get into applications, multiple ways to play, add, additional workspaces in. If I want to create a new workspace out of this, I just go there. If I want to move that to a different workspace, I just go there. It's just very simple. And they have they have taken the best of what GNOME has done and just added those sweet perfections on top. And that was what is delivered Pop! OS. And then the attention to the hardware so that it will actually work on modern hardware makes it that much better, the stuff you can't see behind the scenes, which is why Pop! OS is quickly becoming one of my favorite distros of all time. But you know what time it is. I have to game. I have to. In any distro review thing that I touch on, I have to game. And can Pop! OS game? Yeah, baby, it can game. So we're playing Streets of Rage 4 here. If you've not played this game, definitely check it out. The soundtrack is awesome. It has a lot of the slapping meat, punching sounds and things that I can't play for you because it'll get copyright. So we just have to kind of pretend, just pretend you hear lots of great sound effects and nice stabbing and punching and kicking and all the cool stuff that's in Streets of Rage. But I love this art style. I love what they've done, even though this isn't necessarily triple A graphics. If you look at the attention to detail and the neon signs in the background blinking and some of the steam and trash cans and little radio dials and things lighting up. All of that had to be drawn. All of that had to be animated. And it just shows that it's simplistic perfection, which makes it the perfect game to play 
and Pop! OS because that's kind of how I feel about how Pop! OS is. It's the simplicity, yet the advancement kind of behind the scenes that make it so good. So I want to give a special shout out to DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean is a sponsor of the entire Destination Linux network. So if you want to support the Destination Linux network, whether you're a fan of this show, Destination Linux, the podcast, Hardware Addict, Pseudo Show, Linux for Everyone, all of the fantastic content out there, then you want to go to do.co slash DLN. They're going to give you a hundred dollar credit for two months to go drop any digital droplet that you want. You could set up a Minecraft server. You could set up a Jitsi server. You could set up a ghost server. You could set up a WordPress website. You can do all of those things. And they have 2000 cloud agnostic tutorials to help you through as well. So do.co slash DLN, grab that hundred dollar credit. Make sure you go to that site so they know that we sent you such a fantastic company that loves and supports all the open source community out there and helps bring us so many and support so many fantastic projects. So check them out. So that's it. Streets of Rage 4. Love this game. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And until next time, get out there in the streets of rage and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe! And thank you for watching this video.